Just about. Snap it up. All clear. Are you sure? I'm sure. I didn't see nobody. I'd better go now, Mickey. Will you call me? First chance I get. E and H. Send a car to Max Carlot, 14th and Hamilton. Meet the officer, possible GTA suspects in lock. I will. in front of you and come out slow. All right, come on. Keep your hands in front. Now turn around and face the car. Put your hands on the roof and put your weight on it. All right, palms down. Get your feet back. Come on. Come on. That's it. Aren't you going to tell me anything about what happened last night? Well, my attorney told me I didn't have to tell you anything till he gets here. Look, Mr. Hartrap, this report on the shooting of Officer Kellogg has to be on the captain's desk when he gets in at 8 o'clock. Now, what's he going to think when he reads that you were found at the scene of the crime and refused to say anything? Not even what you were doing there. Well, my attorney told me I didn't have to say anything. Captain has a lot of problems to contend with every day. He's not going to like it when he finds that you're one of them. Now, you still have a few minutes left to give me a statement before he gets here. Hi, lady. Good morning, Captain. Good morning, Captain. Captain. Good morning, Jenny. How about something in the Kellogg shooting? Talk to Lieutenant Imlay. He's handling it. Oh, I did. He said to talk to you. All I know is what I got on the phone from Imlay. Captain. Take it easy, Frankie. Morning reports all here? All except Imlay's. He's still working on his. What's holding him up? He's been talking to the witness they picked up at the shooting last night. Well, I want to see his report as soon as it's ready. 
What's the latest from the hospital? Kellogg's still under oxygen. He hasn't regained consciousness. Not good. Miss Easton's outside. Hmm? The girl Judge Chaucer called about. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, what's the name of that con outside with Lacey? Frankie Pierce. Uh -huh. He told Lacey he's got something good for you. Well, we'll see. Uh, they turned down our request for a new typewriter. <laughs> Naturally. There's the television interview today at one. You have to be at the studio a half an hour early. For makeup. Makeup? They do it to everybody. I wish I could get out of it. Today's a bad day. Here, save this for me, Jenny. The chief called. Okay. Here's Nashville on Owen Critch. They've got a warrant on him, too. Let me see the charges. Oh, uh, Doris? Barnaby. She busy? I'll hang on. Chamber of Commerce again, with copies to the chief and Cade. Pickpockets? Mm-hmm. Cade wants to see you about it. Oh, chief? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Ginny talked to the hospital. I gave it all to homicide. Imlay. Well, taking the automobile after shooting the officer sounds like more than just a car theft to me. No, nothing on the witness. I'm waiting for Imlay on that. Yeah, I will, Chief. No, nothing more. Yeah. Do you want to see Frankie Pierce first? No, let him stew a little. Send the Eastern girl in. All right. You may go in now, Miss Easton. Miss, did you tell him, Miss? Take it easy, Frankie. This is Barnaby. Let me talk to Les. Miss Easton? Morning, Les. Listen to this. Nashville picked up Critch. Yeah, they've got a charge against them, but uh, it's not enough. We can wrap them twice as hard, so get an extradition. They'll cooperate. If not, let me know. Miss Easton, please sit down. Thank you. Judge Chaucer spoke to you, Captain? Yes, he did. Well, I don't know how much the judge has told you. Well, only that your mother is being victimized. I don't know the details. He calls himself Alfredo Di Mantova, Count Di Mantova. And he's years younger than mother. Well, we can't arrest him for that. She met him on the plane going to Rome, and he followed her all over Europe. And she wasn't here a week before he followed her over here. Well, is he extorting money from her? Well, she's paying his hotel bill. No, I meant blackmail. I don't understand the purpose of your questions. If your mother is being victimized, I need proof. Well, this count is planning to marry her. Well, there's nothing illegal in that. Captain, maybe if you knew mother, you'd understand. She's been sheltered all her life. And she's helpless and afraid of growing old. The money isn't important, but it's mother. This would really wreck her life, and I need your help. Well, excuse me. The Kellogg shooting, this is all I've got. Nothing new here. We've got plenty of suspects for show up, but no witness to identify him. What do you mean, no witness? What about the undertaker we picked up at the shooting? Yeah, he's a problem. In what way? Well, he won't give us anything. I'd like you to talk to him. Well, we won't be long. I have him in detention. I'm sorry I've taken up so much of your time. There's a charge called marriage, Bunko. Misrepresentation for the purpose of fraud or deceit. We'll see. Get me Atkinson. One petticoat. Sergeant Atkinson, Captain Barnaby's office. Okay, Jenny. Lou, take over. Two girdles. Three pairs of stockings. Garter belt. Garter belt. This may be a foolish question, Captain, but will Mother have to know anything about this? No, she won't, and neither will the Count, unless we get something on him. 
This is Sergeant Atkinson, Miss Easton. How do you do? How do you do, Miss Easton? Marv, I want you to pick up a county Montova at the St. Clair Hotel. Oh, what's your... None yet, but we are looking for marriage, Bunko. Bring him in on the mistaken identity cover. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. I'll follow through personally. Thank you, Captain. Parents are an awful problem these days, aren't they? Captain. Give me the list on the show up. Captain, I gotta talk to you. Can your business wait, Lacey? Sure, Barney. Captain, I gotta talk to you. It's important. All right, let's take a walk. Fine, fine. Frankie Pierce. You sent me up, remember? Judge Rollins beside him. Give me one to five. What's on your mind, Frankie? I'm in trouble, Barney. They got me up again. Well, I should have kept your nose clean. That's a bum rap this time. Barney, listen. You always said that if I ever happen on to anything. Yeah? You said you'd make it good to me. Did I? Yeah, Barney, and I got something. Something big on me. Come here. All right, Frankie. How big? Come on, don't waste my time. Let's have it. All of a sudden, I can't think. What do you mean, he can't think? Well, it's not so easy to think with a bum rap and all, and not know what's going to happen to you. My, my mind gets foggy. Keep him away from me, Lacey, till his mind clears up. Wait a minute. Your mind cleared up already? I just remembered. But first, Barn, I'm in trouble. Can't you help me? Well, out with it, Frankie. What have you got? A bank heist, all set to go. Where? Well, I could think better if I wasn't so worried. What's the charge, Lacey? Breaking and entering attempted burglary. Frankie's on parole. A mountain out of a mall, though. I was drunk, got in the wrong room by mistake. But first, Barn, give me a break, will you? Kill the bum beef. You'll be doing society a favor, and you'll keep an innocent man from taking a jolt. And you'll, you'll help me think. What bank, Frankie? You'll kill the beef. I'm not promising anything. But you'll help. It all depends. Federal Savings Bank. West Side Branch. Well, go on. Who's pulling it? You think I know everything. I give you something big and you don't, you, you don't take care of me. Lock him up, Lacey. Maybe he thinks better alone. Believe me, Barney, I'm telling you everything I know. Uh, I'll take an oath. Save it for the courtroom. I remember now. A uh, Kansas City boy named Al Box. Call Chisholm. Where do you fit in? I was in the store with him when he got the deal. He bought the plans from a life of named Peter. Chisholm. Captain he wanted me in on it, but not for me. Too rich for my blood. When was this? A couple of months ago. You've had this information for a couple of months? You see, it was this way, Bonnie. I wasn't in trouble until yesterday. You're not going to hold it against me, are you? All right, Frankie. When is it set for? I don't know exactly. Could be any day. What do you mean, any day? Well, Barker's planned to pull it as soon as he got out. He's in town. Is that what you're saying? I don't know, honest, Bonnie. He was due out a week ago. I don't know if he made it. Honest, Bonnie, I'm telling you everything I know. I'll... Yes, I know. You'll take an oath. Lacey is lending us Frankie Pierce for a while. He's got some information for us. Ah. Check on it, Ed. Might be something. Let me know. Man. Give me Frankie's file. I'll be in detention or show up. Man. Well, listen, then. The captain's a friend of mine, and he promised me that... Sure, way... Frankie. And he promised me you'd tell me a story. Let's hear it. If you just take a look at the suspects, tell us if you recognize any of them, then you can go back to your mortuary. All I was trying to do was help the policeman not get involved in this mess. Mr. Hartranth, Captain Barnaby. How do you do, Mr. Hartranth? Captain, you don't think I had anything to do with what happened last night? No, of course not. Why, well, I'm a secretary of the Good Fellows Club, a member of the district draft board, and treasurer of the Undertakers and Estate Association. We're not accusing you of anything, Mr. Hartranth. About last night. 
We just want to know if you saw the shooting. My uh, attorney told me not to say anything until he gets here. The officer is in a critical condition. He was shot while he was on duty trying to protect the decent citizens of this community like yourself. Now it becomes your duty to help him. All we want you to do is to answer one simple question. Did you or did you not see the shooting? He told me not to answer any questions. Come on. Who's his lawyer? Dwight Foreman. Foreman, huh? Well, that's going to make it interesting. If anybody has something to add on Rose, check Officer Harm. That's all, Rose. Next is number five, Marie Duvall, brought in by Sergeants Gruber and Collins for drunk rolling. Age 33. 24. 5 foot 7. 132. 116. That's all right, Marie. This is no model agency. Okay, Marie. Now walk up and down. Now face These right. are the suspects I'm holding for heart cramp. Now, Got nothing on them without him. Huh? Now, Marie, would you turn around and face front? I don't want to do. You don't have to tell me. All right, Marie. Number three is Alice Valen. Let me know when Foreman gets here. And Bridget Jerome, age 30, five feet one. Check Officer Harms on any of these girls, that's all. Now let's have lineup for Lieutenant Cade. Come on, boy, step lively. <coughs> now we'll find out, Mr. Moore. You want to see me, Cade? Oh, yes, Barney. We're ready, Lieutenant. Go ahead, I'll wait. All right, Mr. Moore. I want you to look at these men very carefully. One of them picked your pocket. We nabbed them halfway up the street. Five seconds after you yelled thief, and a second after he dumped your wallet in the sewer. Now pick him up. Your officer on the phone, Captain. Well, I don't know, Lieutenant. Yes, Jenny. What? Well? Well? Well, well, I don't know, Lieutenant. It happened so fast. All I saw was his back. That one. You sure? Well, pretty sure. Number three, step forward. Yeah, that's him. Detective Sergeant Burns, you can step down. <laughs> All right, Mr. Moore. Get your wallet upstairs. Thanks, just the same. That's all, Fitz. Okay, Fine. clear the stage. About that letter from the Chamber of Commerce on the Merchants' Convention next week. All the pickpockets in town are licking their chops, just waiting. I'll give you some extra, man. That's not going to do it, Barney. What I need is a nod from you. Let me rouse them. Here's the file on Frankie Pierce. Let me turn my boys loose with instructions. I told you I'm going to give you some extra, man. And you're going to give the instructions I tell you to give. Well, of course. If the Chamber of Commerce is kicking, that's my problem. Wait a minute, Now, just do your job, Kate, and let me worry about the rest. Kellogg just died. Frankie's information is stacking up. We checked the penitentiary. Al Barkas was released eight days ago. He's probably in town. What do you think, Lou? Don't worry about that. She'll be here. You don't think he's backing out on account of last night? Dutch and me make a deal. We stand by him. He'll be here. Al, here's Marty. He's got the truck. I don't get it. Why can't Marty be on time just once? You'd know if you met her, Al. Maybe I would. The right time in the right place. Al's right. Dutch. Ask him. 
be here. What about the sedan? It's all painted and stashed in the old garage. We're okay in the car. We got here on time. What kept you? My last night in town, Al. After all. It was mine, too. I got here. I'm sorry. Al, do you ever get a feeling when things aren't right? You know what I mean? No. It's like when you can smell the coppers and the heat. You notice that? I ain't been sniffing around. I've been here, waiting. You figure we're all set? Lou's arranged for the boat. You say the cars are set. We're in good shape. This thing last night doesn't bother you guys, huh? Why should it? It bothers you, Marty? <laughs> Says here the cop's not expected to live. Officer Kellogg was still under oxygen. His condition was reported as... We read it. And what if he dies? So what if he does? Well, it'll change the odds a little. You want out, Marty? It's nothing like that. Okay. Anybody else worried? Just say so. Nobody's worried, Al. Sure, I've gone this far. I'll go the whole way. I guess Dutch is with us. I talk to Dutch, too. Maybe it's the dame that's bothering you. Ah, oh, come on, Al. What's eating you? Ain't jealous, are you? Guy gets dame happy, forgets about business. Not me, Al. Dame means only one thing to me. And what have you been yakking about? You know how you had everything planned? Yeah, the plans are still the same, nothing has changed. You didn't plan shooting the cop. Well, what are you worried about? You're in the clear. That's right. Let's keep in Dutch. Barney around. She's inside. I've tipped my leads to be on the lookout for Barkers. How about calling Mona Ross? You know how to handle her better than I. Mona? Okay, she's a good bet. In the meantime, I'm moving on a stakeout. Well, don't tie up any more men than you have to. Right, Barney. Line, please. Ross Escort Bureau. I'm sorry, she's busy. May I help you? Oh, yes, Captain Barnaby, just a moment. Mona, Captain Barnaby's on the phone. I'll be right there. She'll be right here, Captain. Hello, Barney, love. Oh, fine. Everything's fine. Oh, it's good to hear from you. Well, can't you tell me what it is on the phone? Well, I can't leave this minute. All right, Bonnie. I'll be there in half an hour. Trouble? I don't think so. He just wants to talk to me about something. Move along. Move along. Keep moving. Snap it up, girls. You can get your stuff upstairs. Oh, Anna. Have you got any of Mona Ross's girls? Two of them. They're checking out now. Well, pull that release as I want them held. What do I say to Mona when she starts hollering? You don't know anything about it. The foreman just went in to see Hartran. Yeah? <laughs> I'm sorry you had such a rough night, Mr. Hartranf. However, I think the worst is over. Well, I hope so. Where does your wife think you are? Out of town. Delivering a corpse. And uh, when does she expect you back? Sometime tonight. You've got to get me out of here. Oh, getting you out of here is no problem. Dwight, if my wife ever finds out I was with Vicky instead of a corpse... Now, take your time and think before you answer. Can you identify or give a description of the man under the stairs? It was too dark. I didn't see him clearly. 
Of course, if he walked into the room, I might possibly... If it was too dark, just say so. Don't say anything else. Or you may wind up in court answering questions you don't want to answer. What about the newspapers? Do what I told you and I can keep it out of the papers. Anything, just so my wife doesn't find out. Now, don't worry, I'll have you out of here in half an hour. <laughs> Thanks, Dwight. They'll release you or I'll get you out in a writ. Uh, that'll take longer, but you'll be out of here in time. What if they call me back later? My wife will want an explanation. I told you, if you say nothing, I can handle it from here on. Just remember, it was too dark. Well, that winds it up, Barney, except for the suspects we're holding for Imlay. Well, Dwight Foreman is in with Imlay's witness now, so we better stand by until we hear from them. If the witness hired Foreman as his attorney, you might as well forget about him. Well, let's not jump to any conclusions. Foreman and Hartramp are waiting to see me, Barney. Okay, I'll go with you. We pulled in a lot of possible suspects last night, Dwight. I'd like to have Mr. Hartramp take a look at them. Mr. Hartramp will do all he can, Lieutenant. But I'm afraid you're going to be disappointed. He didn't see anything. Is that right, Mr. Hartramp? Yes, sir. There weren't any lights, and from where I was standing... It was too dark. That's right. The officers in the squad car said they got to the scene within a few seconds of the shooting. You were already there. Yes, sir. That's right. What the man look like who fired the shot? He already told you, Lieutenant. It was too dark. Let him answer for himself. All right. It was too dark. Where were you when the shots were fired? I was just leaving the apartment house. You were just leaving the apartment house? What apartment house? You don't have to answer that, Mr. Hartraff. What were you doing in an apartment house in South Hamilton at 1.30 in the morning? You don't have to answer that either. You live in Harmon, eight miles away. Who were you visiting? Oh, now, look here, Lieutenant. This is all off the record, Mr. Foreman. Oh, sure it is, but what's the point? Mr. Hartramp already told you that he didn't see anything. No sense holding him. Yes, it was too dark. All right, Bob. You can release your suspects. All right, Mr. Hartramp. Let's go. I didn't say he could go. Oh, now look, Barney. This is one of my busy days. Don't make me waste a lot of time. I'm sorry, Dwight, but last night a policeman was killed. But uh, you can't blame Mr. Hartramp for that. Come on, Barney. Okay, Dwight, when you're ready to cooperate. But we are cooperating, I'm Barney. not convinced. Until I am, he's still a suspect. Oh, don't be ridiculous. You know Mr. Hartramp here is a fine, upstanding American citizen. He's secretary of the Goodfellows Club and a member of his local draft board. Yes, I know, and uh, something or other of the Undertaker's Association. Now, look, Barney, I don't want to have to go over your head and run to the commissioner about this, but if you won't play ball, I may have to. Now, you listen to me, Foreman. I know all about your contacts with the commissioner and your influence with the political brass in this town, but don't threaten me. I don't like it. I'm not running a detective bureau for you, for myself, or for your clients. I've got a job to do, and I'm doing it the best I know how. If the Mr. Hartramp here, he's still in my custody. If you want to spring him, get him out on a writ. I'm holding him until then. So we'll get a writ. Tell him check Uncle Irving and get the releases. We're through with him. How about? Yeah. I want you to keep working on Hartram. Anything you say. I think you can soften him up if you work fast enough. Find out whose apartment he was visiting on South Hamilton Drive last night and bring the lady in. Uh -huh. Foreman is getting Hartram out on the writ. But I'll try to stall him till I hear from her. I'll call you when I get her. Stairs. Another man stationed behind the teller's counter. I'll be near the manager, Mr. Schaefer. All right, Lieutenant. We'll see how it looks after we're in the bank. Mm. Captain Barnaby, this is Mr. Schaefer, Vice President of the Federal Savings Bank. How do you do, Mr. Schaefer? How do you do? The, uh, Lieutenant Chisholm told me this stakeout is based on some information that was given to you. Yes, that's right. How do you happen to get the tip, Captain? Well, I can't answer that, Mr. Schaefer. A detective is only as good as his information. We'd never get any if we revealed the source. Well, what are the chances, then? Well, you never can tell. A while back, we got a tip on the jewelry store. We staked it out for a month and nothing happened. How does it shape up, Ed? All right. We'll be ready by the time the bank opens. Fine. If we can locate the men who are planning the escape before they can pull it, so much the better. If not, let's hope the information proves false. Go ahead, Ed. 
I suggest we go over it once more. Fred, you remember your... Pokey. This town's hot as a firecracker. That's what I've been telling Al. How come you got picked up? Oh, yeah. Well, last night I went to the movies. When I get out, I decide to shoot some pool. I'm there about an hour when a squad car comes up. Pulls three of us in. They drag us downtown and grill us all night long about a cop killing. So the cop died? Yeah, he kicked off this morning. What's it all about? Someone with Marty. Nothing. Go on. What happened next? Oh, yeah. Well, they got nothing on me, see, but I can't prove I've been to the movies. I tell them the whole plot, but they ain't seen the picture. So they hold me over for the morning show up. Then nothing happens. They let me go, and here I am. Well, what's wrong? I didn't do anything. I, I can't help it if... Here it is, Dutch. The cop was shot while Pete and I were left in the car last night. I didn't know. What do we do now? What do you think we should do? Don't ask me. What do you say, Lou? Sure, sure, Al. Well. Go ahead as planned. Get the car? Sure. 51 Buick. Marty had it painted. Bull be waiting and everything's set. Any more questions? Lou? No more questions. Okay, let's get going. your answer, Marty? I'm still thinking. You had plenty of time to think. I don't feel so good. I think I'll skip it. What kind of twist is that? I just don't feel right, you know, the, the cop killing and the heat. You sure it ain't the dame. That ain't the point. It just so happened I wasn't with you guys last night. I'm clean. Okay, Marty. It's time to go. <laughs> what are we waiting for? release. Check him out, please. I told you everything would be all right. I'm fully aware that the budget is already strained. Nevertheless, I strongly recommend that... Uh... Captain Barnaby's office. Yes, he's right here. It's the desk sergeant. Yes, Fred? We're issuing that release now, Captain. All right, uh, stall him for a few minutes. Hartram's on his way out. He'll be leaving in a few minutes. We'll be waiting for him, Captain. So was I. Uh, nevertheless, I strongly recommend it. I'll handle it, Mac. Wow, let's see what we've got here. Your watch. Your ring. Your wallet. Hi, Dave. Hi, Bob. 
How's the outfit look? Fine. Sorry we had to call you in when you were off duty. Uh, here's the deal. Barney thinks Hartramp is involved with the girl somehow. If we can find her, we can put a lot of pressure on him. Uh-huh. Now, the only thing we know for sure is that he was visiting an apartment house on South Hamilton Drive. See if you can find the girl's address. Well, I'll do the best I can, Bob. I'll give you a two-minute start. All right. Hardraft Mortuary. No, he isn't. Yes, Shirley. Goodbye. May I help you? One of your lines is reported out of order. Oh, they seem to be working fine. Well, there's a private line, Woodley 9051. Oh, Mr. Hartram's office back there. Oh, I won't be bothering Mr. Hartram. No, he's out of town and won't be back till this evening. Thank you. I saw your ad in the paper about the $65 funeral. I was wondering just what does that include? Let me show you our booklet. You know, we offer a choice of 10 services, but frankly, I lean toward this one for $2.95. If you'd just show me the $65? Oh, it's lovely, of course, but it doesn't include the chapel or the organist with the singer. Oh, I see. Did you say $595? Everything's all right now. Isn't that a little high? But isn't this for someone very dear to you? In a way, yes, it's for me. I'm thinking ahead. I'll just take this along and keep in touch with you. I tried to give you as much time as I could. Did you find anything? This address book. Here's a number on South Hamilton Drive. Vicki Webb. Sounds good. Thanks, Dave. Uh, I hope this does it. Tell Barney I'll call him when I check on this. Barney's like that sometimes. Likes to throw his weight around. Well, Dwight, thanks very much. Hello, Dwight. Hello, Mona. Uh, why, that's all right, Mr. Hartramp. You sure I can't give you a lift? Thanks, I'll take a cab. Taxi! Taxi! Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I was just going... Take your hand off me. I'm not touching you. Police! Where are the police? What, what do you I'm mean? a police uh, officer, ma'am. I want this man arrested. But I wasn't doing anything. All I was right, just going... Go. Wait a minute, you, better you come can't along do too. this. I'll wait, be glad. Wait, wait, what do you mean? Uh, Dwight! What, what do you... Uh, Dwight! Sorry, I had to bring you downtown, Mona. Well, it's always good to see you, Barney. I had to come down anyway. They're holding two of my girls. They are? <laughs> As if you didn't know. Go ahead, Barney. What do you want this time? We've got a tip on some out-of-town boys. The only one identified so far is Alvin Barkers. I've heard of him. Here's his description. We hear he's in town, and I want to locate him. Sorry, Barney. We try to steer clear of that element. They might give us a bad name. How about the girls we picked up last time? I intend talking to them. Who said you could talk to them? You're not going to give us trouble, are you, Barney? Well, I need your help. It all depends on you. Oh, hi, Mona. I got him on Tova outside. I didn't know if you wanted me to wait. No, I'll see him later. Uh, you can start him talking. He hasn't stopped since I picked him up. Alfredo Giovanni Borgacci Giuseppe Montalbo, Count de Montova at your service. Count. I wish to cooperate in every way with the police. Well, thank you, Count. Uh, this way, sir. 
Well, uh, what about it, uh, Mona? Look, I operate a license escort service, strictly legit. I don't have clients like Barker's. Of course you don't. But you hear about them, and so do your girls. How can they hear about anything if they're locked up? Ginny, two of Mona Ross's girls are being held. They are to be released on my say-so. Thanks a lot, Ronnie. The uh, boys are in town on business, so you know what to look for. I get the picture. I'll start on it right away. You can tell the girls there will be a token of appreciation from the department for any help they can give us. You're a sweetheart. As much as the budget will allow. And uh, remember, Mona, I can't wait too long for the information. Of course not. Bye, love. Goodbye. Quiet, Barney. Nothing unusual. Yeah, we're all set. I'll stick around today until we get a routine. <laughs> right, we'll do. Sure, Bonnie. I told you I heard Vicky go out earlier this morning. You don't know where? Nope. Does she work? Not regularly. Is there anyone who could tell us where she might be? Yes, there's her mother. She works in some drugstore over in the Roswell district. Do you know which one? No, but it's around there somewhere. Thanks. I hope she's not in any trouble. Barney, you're persecuting an innocent man. Innocent? That's not what the lady said. Dwight, stop it, Barney. He didn't touch her and you know it. All I know is what the lady said, and the word was molest. Dwight, shut up for a minute, will you, Mr. Hartram? Now, wait a minute, Barney. This is an obvious frame. You can get into plenty of trouble. It won't be the first time. Yes? All right, Jenny, I'll be there. Have a car for me. Dwight. Now, don't worry, Mr. Hartram. Everything's going to be all right. Uh, wait a minute, Barney. Dwight, please. Keep your shirt on, will you, Mr. Hartramp? I'll get another rip. Barney! 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 Barney, wait a minute. Barney, listen. I I'm a reasonable man. Let's see if we can't work something out. All right. What did Hartramp see last night? But that's not reasonable. How can you make a man see something that he didn't? Come on, Barney. Let's talk it over. Sure. Thanks, Barney. Barney! 
Barney. Oh. Now, don't be disturbed, Count. From what you've told me, I'm sure that this is just a case of mistaken identity. I tried to understand. How's it going, Lyle? We're talking. I've got his family tree back to the founding of Rome. How's it sound? I don't know. You want to talk to him? I can't. I've got a television interview. I'll get back to you. I must apologize for keeping you like this, Count de Montover. I'm happy to cooperate with the police. Sergeant Atkinson will take you to lunch. Thank you. I'll be back. Arrivederci. Arrivederci. But, Sergeant, I do not know all these questions. What have they to do with being someplace where I wasn't? We'll get it all straightened out eventually. Lunch. Oh, oh Captain. Hello, Mr. Jenner. Oh, uh, call the university and uh, have Professor Varney come in this afternoon. Uh, Captain, can I speak to you for Not a minute, please? Not now. I'll be back at two. Oh, but I've got to talk to you, Captain. I can't stand it any longer. There's going to be trouble. Well, don't worry about it. Hmm? Your wife called. You better hurry. The car's waiting. Uh, oh, but, Captain, please. Uh, make an appointment for Mr. Jenner. Just about ready to go, Captain. Is it uh, all right to smoke during the interview? Well, that's what we want. Mm. Here, have one of ours. On the air in 40 seconds. Now remember, just relax. Yeah. Just be yourself as if you're at home, sitting in your own living room, talking things over. Mm. Oh, only please try to remember to look out toward the cameras as much as possible. Clear the set and stand by. Okay, here we go. See the manager, please. He's right back there. Thank you. 
Put your hands on the desk. Don't move a muscle. Can I help you? Yes. Press the buzzer. Turn around and open the gate. the conversation away from your men, Captain. Yeah. In the short time we have left, tell us something about yourself. For instance, do you ever assign yourself to a case? No, not really. Uh, yes, occasionally when uh, something real hot comes along, I'll uh, pitch in with the men and lend whatever assistance I can. I'll go over the case with them and maybe suggest some angles, probably work on some angle or another myself. There's no telling, just... Uh, how much work I might do on a specific case. I like to say this, though, for the... What does it mean? You'll have to excuse me. Oh, uh, excuse me. Thank you, Captain, for a most interesting visit, and uh, I hope we'll have the pleasure of another interesting visit soon. Attention, all units. Attention, all units. Be on the lookout for Alvin Barkas, alias Alan Backus. girl's parents are outside. Well, I'll see them when I finish with Lacey. Mona Ross called. Yeah, what'd she say? She'll call back. Wouldn't leave a message. I'll try and reach her. We just came from the morgue, Barney. Well, what about it, Frankie? Could you identify him? Honest, Barney, I never saw those two guys before in my life. Frankie, any help you can give us will work in your favor. I know. I wish I could help. But honest, Barney, I'm telling you everything I know. Okay. Bring the girl's parents in. Barton, you're not gonna hold this against me. You're not gonna forget what you told me this morning. Right? We'll see. Keep them on tap. Mr. and Mrs. Lawson. This is Captain Barnaby. How do you do? Captain, is there any news? Have you heard anything about Carol? The city's sealed up tight. Every road, every bridge. We have men posted at the airport, the railroad stations, the bus depots, at the boat docks. They can't leave the city. Every available man is on the case. We're doing everything we can. We'll find her. Yes, but will you find her alive? Will we get Carol back unharmed? 
How can you tell? How can you be sure? Get going. All right. What about the girl? First, get the boat. When we're outside the harbor, we'll talk about it. All right, sister, relax. Just do what you're told. You'll be all right. Stairs are over there. I'm Vicky's mother, but I don't keep her on a leash. Oh, look, honey, you must have some idea where she is. I might. You tell me what you want to see her about. Ah, oh, come on, I just want to get some information from her. <laughs> well... I knew you'd help me, honey. All right. She went shopping for a coat. Do you know where? No. One of the expensive places on Langley Boulevard. After all, she makes 45 a week. Thanks. Come on, come on. Now, let's see what... And never mind the conversation. Ah, ah, ah. Sign here. Go ahead, sign. Stop worrying, will you, Mr. Hartram? You're out, aren't you? Yes, but... Uh... Now, take my advice and try and forget about what happened. Sure, Dwight. And relax. Everything's going to be all right now. Now, you go on home. I'll let you know the minute anything happens. Have you a car? Yes, thank you. Fine. I'll keep in touch with you. Thank you, Captain. Jenny, haven't you reached Mona yet? Her line's been busy. Well, keep trying. Come in, Mrs. Jenner. Please sit down. Well, what seems to be the trouble this time? Well, when I walk down the street, the shadows get all over me. Every Wednesday evening, it's the boxing matches. I see. It's the television pictures. They're all over me. There, there must be a law. Mona Ross on extension two. Oh, excuse me. Mona? I told you... I told Jenny I'd call you back. Didn't she give you the message? Well, I can't wait, Mona. What is it? Have you got something for me? Yes, I have. But I'm in the middle of a meeting. It might be. I'm busy, love. I'll call you back. Well, you'll have to talk louder. I can't hear you. Oh, just a second. I've got another call. Rush to the nearest squad car to 105 South New Hall, Ross Escort Bureau. Make it a code, too. Pick up Mona Ross and bring it to me. Still there, Mona? I'll have to hang up, Barney. I'll call you... Donna, there goes the other phone. Hold on. Hold on a minute, Mona. Sorry, Mr. Jenner. Well, what are you going to do about it, Captain? I can't stand it much longer. Now, let me get this straight. Every time you go outside, you get these television shadows on you. Even at night? It's, it's worse at night. Well, I don't know. I'll do what I can. Have you got a witness? A witness? Yes, first you've got to have a witness. Oh, I didn't know. Be right with you, Mona. A witness? What do I need a witness for? Well, it's a legal technicality. A legal technicality? Uh, what do I do? You have to get the witness. That's your job. Oh, I'll get one, Captain. Uh, where do I find one? What about, uh, Morton Garber? He's very good. Morton Garber? Yes. 
Do I know him? Better if you don't. That makes him a perfect witness. Oh. Oh, I'll get him, Captain. Uh, where do I go? The city clinic. You know where it is. Oh, sure. Ask for Dr. Morton Garvin. Tell him I sent you to see him. Dr. Morton Garvin? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Captain. Thank you very much. Mona, I'm sorry. You were saying... Uh... Really, Barney, you don't seem to understand. I told you I can't talk now. You'll have to come along with us, Mona. Say, what is this? Sorry, Mona orders. Take your hands off me. Wait till I see that, Barney. Take your hands off me. Professor Vani's here. Professor, how are you? Good of you to come down. Not a bit. I always enjoy it. This won't take long. We've got a man here I want you to see. Well, what are you holding him for? Well, we brought him in on mistaken identity, but uh, we're looking for marriage, Bunko. Drunkenness and disorderly conduct. Well, I told you... All right, all right. I'm afraid I'll have to have your belongings again. Captain? Captain? Atkinson has been handling it. He's in with him now. Captain! This is it. Alfredo Di Manto. Huh. It's a good name. Sounds all right to me. Again, I must apologize for keeping you like this, Count. This is the man we've been waiting for. No. No, you've got the wrong man. I've never seen this man before. You've made a mistake. I'm terribly sorry, sir. Not at all. How the police could have made such a mistake, I don't know. My name is Bruno Vani. Alfredo Giovanni Borgacci Giuseppe Montavo, Count de Montova. De Montova? Don't I know that name? Leon de Montova di Milano? Mia familia del nord. Questo è un colpo di fortuna a trovare un concitantino. Si, sono appena arrivato in questo paese. Lei è nato in America o in Italia? Io sono nato qui. I miei genitori sono nati in Bologna. Ah, è un americano bolognese, va? Huh? Si. <laughs> I thought you went home. We decided to wait here, Captain. Have you heard anything yet? No, nothing yet, but uh, we're doing everything we can. Wouldn't you like to wait in my office? You'll find it more comfortable. We're fine, Captain. Please don't worry about us. Just a routine check. Okay, Joe, move it out. This is really a raw one, Barney. I told you I couldn't talk. No, I couldn't wait, Mona. I had a customer sitting right in front of me. I tried to do you a favor and you picked me up like I'm an ordinary... Well, we haven't the time. Let's get down to business. Well, about a week ago, one of my girls, Dolores Lee, stops coming in. I figure she's got a fella. You know, it happens every so often. Oh, let's skip all that. Well, a little while ago, Dolores shows up wild. She's got a fella, all right. Seems he's been giving her a big line. Coming into lots of sugar, trip to Mexico, good times, fat of the land. This afternoon, he waltzes into her apartment, parks himself, and says the deal is off. No sugar, no Mexico, no good times. All he's got to offer is himself. 
a real phony. What's his name? She said his name was uh, Marty Kuselich. What, what about it, Frankie? Did you ever hear of him? Only what I've already told you. Marty Kuselich was in the store with us. Think he could be in on it? Sure. Why not? Him and Barker's were pals. You could be in on it. Where can we locate him? He's at her place now. Linda Hotel, room 3C. We'll take a look at him. Well, you better hurry up. She's not there, and he won't be there long. Dolores is going to tell him to take a powder. She's real fed up with that phony. What do you say, Lacey? We think it sounds good, Barney. Okay, I'll be waiting. Right, we're on our way. Barney, uh, about that token of appreciation. If it's the man we want, you've earned it. Fine. Well, see you around, love. Mona. Sorry I had to pick you up that way. Don't be sorry, Barney. I may have to pick you up sometime. All right, let's go. Come on. We had a nice talk. What did you find out? The Count's an imposter. You sure? Absolutely. First, he wasn't born in Italy. His Italian is one generation removed. Second, he isn't a de Montover, because his idiom is from southern Italy, the kind used around Naples. The de Montovers are from Milan in the north. Third, he was born in America. His English is disguised, but his flat A's and his hard R's betray a background of the Middle West. I'd say, uh, Cleveland or Chicago. That wraps it up. Lieutenant Imlay on extension two. Yeah, Bob? I got her, Barney. We're coming in now. Nice, sir. Yeah, let's go. Thank you, Professor. Anytime you need me, Captain. Ginny, bring your book. I want you to take a letter. This is ridiculous! This is ridiculous. I won't sign a letter like this. I have no intention of parting with Mrs. Easton. We know you're not a count. We know you weren't born in Italy. You cannot intimidate me. I have rights. I demand to see Mrs. Easton. What are you doing with my belongings? This is all of it, Barney. We took the liberty of checking you out of your hotel. You have no right to do that. Yes, I know. Only if you're going to catch that 5.30 train, you'll have to hurry. 5.30 train? Yes, it goes to Chicago and Cleveland. Misrepresentation and fraud for the purpose of marriage is a felony in this state. Yeah? Yeah, Jenny. I'll be right in. Give me a choice, Marv. First class accommodations on the train or a bunk in the cell block while we check up on him. All right, Count, which is it gonna be?
We'll put up the dough for my train fare. It'll be taken care of. All right, Kislich. Make this easy on yourself. Make what easy? Where's What's Barkus? It? Hold up. Who? All right, stop the stalling. Barkus? What? Never heard of him. You and he just finished doing a stretch together. With 500 of the guys. So I met him once, maybe. What does that mean? It means we know you tied him with Barkus in that bank heist he pulled today. <laughs> you got the wrong Monte Kuzlich. I was riding in a cab at 1 o'clock. Cab number 605, Yellow Cab Company. Well, you could check it. There's a bank job at 1 o'clock, Marty. How do I know what time the bank job was? All I know is you can't be in two places at the same time. Like I said, I'm clean. Well, I don't know from nothing. Now, go ahead if you want. Sock me around. You gonna hold me? Hey, look, I'm entitled to one phone call. Give him his call. How do you get hold of the public defender? This print just came out of the soup, Captain. This is the bullet that killed Kellogg. And this is the one we took out of Lieutenant Chisholm. Both were fired from the same gun. Marcus? Yes, it looks that way. That clears q switch. Yes, it does. Back again, White? For the third and last time. You're going to regret this day, Barney. Maybe, if you'll tell me what it's all about. Don't get smart with me, Barney. I came here to tell you that I'm going to have my client released for the last time. And if you try to detain him, I'll see to it that you and your whole blasted department go up before the grand jury. Is that clear? Give me the booking desk. Fred, this is Barnaby. Foreman is on his way over with another writ. I want Hartrand moved out to the Belmont station. Give me the radio room. Back again, Mr. Foreman? What I just told Barnaby goes for you too, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Car 205K. Car 205K. Lieutenant Emily, proceed to Belmont station. You? Good. Have my car ready. Okay, Lacey, we're going to work on Marty Kuzlich now. Maybe he'll squeal. Well, how are you going to do it? Ballistics showed us that Barker shot Kellogg last night. Well, what if I tell Marty that he did it? So you fall for it? He might, if I have a witness to back me up. That's where Hartramp comes in. You just wait the lawyer gets here. Okay, Marty, you're going along with us. Where are we going? Come on, let's go. This is the most outrageous day I ever had. Barnaby isn't going to get away with his antics anymore, I can tell you that. Oh, uh, Mr. Hartramp, it's Dwight. Mr. Hartramp? Well, what do you know? Jailbreak. Mr. Hartramp! He's on his way down now. To see me. Relax, Marty. Right. 
Right in here, Marty. Make yourself comfortable, Marty. All right, now. Why'd you bring me out here? Want a cigarette? Take his cups off, lazy. I don't get it. I thought it was all settled. I'm clean. What are you guys holding me for? Did you check that cabbie? Well, here, remember, I gave him two bucks. Sure you didn't, Marty. Then what is it? What kind of treatment is this? Just because I've done time. I still got some rights. Of course you have, Marty. The public defendant's gonna do something about this. I was in no way near that bank job. I got nothing to worry about. You got nothing to worry about, Marty. Stop worrying. <laughs> Who's worried? I just don't like being pushed around. Who are you guys waiting for? It can't be any out of town job. Well, that last stretch cleaned me up. All over the country. I can go anywhere. I'm free! They're here, Barney. What about that policeman who was shot last night, Marty? Hey, now, wait, I was with my girl last night, Dolores Lee! This is crazy! Call Dolores, she'll tell you. Montgomery 33990. Come on, call Dolores! Police stations are kind of charming, ain't they? Yeah. Kevin Barnaby, Miss Vicki Webb. How do you do? Oh, how do you do? Vicki. Jackie, sweet. What have you done? Well, you two know each other. Vicki, what did you tell them? Why, nothing, Jackie. They didn't ask me any questions. We didn't have to. We know you're supposed to be out of town and that you're not due back until this evening. Your wife's probably expecting you for dinner. Uh-oh. Vicky. Oh, by the way, Vicky, have you met Mrs. Hartranth? You better leave me out of this. Well, we think you should meet Mrs. Hartranth, Vicky. After all, you two have uh, something in common. Captain, please, please. Vicky. Oh, Mr. Hartranth. A policeman was killed on South Hamilton Drive at 1.30 this morning. You were there on the spot when it happened. Isn't that so, Mr. Hartranth? Well, I was just coming out of the apartment. And Bill. you got a good look at the man who fired the shot. Well, it was so dark. Yes, I... but you've got excellent eyes. You were close to the man and you saw him. And all I saw... And you can identify him if you see him again. You're willing to do your duty and identify him and testify to that fact. Isn't that so, Mr. Hartranth? Well, I... Uh... Well, the man who shot the officer is in our custody. Here. In the next room. He killed Kellogg. And you're the only one who was there. You saw him last night, and now you will see him again. When I take you in there, I want you to take a good look at him and identify him. That's him. What? Are you sure? Absolutely. I got excellent eyes. I don't want any mistakes. So help me. You'll testify to that fact? Oh, it's my duty. Now, will you tell us again exactly what you saw this man do? I saw him shoot the officer on South Hamilton Drive about 1.30 this morning. No! He's crazy! Thank you, Mr. Hartranth. Give him his release. All right, Marty. You know what I think of cop killers. You're crazy! I wasn't even near there! One thing before, but now I know who pulled the trigger. Marty, I didn't know you pulled the trigger. No, I'm telling you! I'm going to see to it personally that you get the book. If it's the last thing I do, I'm going to make sure that you get it. Stop it, you please! I'm going to be there when they walk you to the gas chamber. I'm going to look through the glass as they strap you down. I'm going to watch you as the smoke curls up your nostrils and fills your lungs. I'm going to watch you every second of it, and I won't be happy till you keel over like a wet rag. Marty, the cop killer. I wasn't even there last night! It was Barkus and Pete Monty. Barkus and Pete Monty. Hartram saw you. I swear, I swear. Well, 
Ask Dolores. I was with her. Dolores will swear. Dolores will lie. Well, no, why should she? Sure she will. She loves you. No! How do you think a judge and jury will react? Who do you think they're going to believe? A con like you and that floozy of yours? Or a clean, upstanding, home-loving American citizen like Mr. Jack Hartgrave? Of course, if we could get Barkas and Pete Monty. You want to know where you can find Barkas?
Hold it, Marcus. Everything is fine. Yes, Mommy. Everything is all right. Take him in. See you in the morning, Lacey. 